patch filter is also a template matching kind of built uh, architecture. Um, the thing with the match filter is just that uh, there's even less room for variability in the cell instead of the um, It really wants uh, a uh, uh, stereotype kind of call or sound to detect. Um, uh, it works in the time series, unlike all, all the other detectors we've been looking at work on the spectrogram. Uh, match filter works in the time series instead of the signal wave form. So what you do to your spectrogram doesn't affect it at all. Uh, it's just the, the, uh, the, the time series, the wave form. Um, filtering does affect it, because filtering happens right after you get the sound in. So um, filtering will affect match, match filter operation, but nothing else that you do in HMI will, will affect how this detector work, works. Uh, the way it works is it's a lot like spectrum correlation. There's a kernel, which is a, something you define that's a, a template for it to match, essentially. And it um, cross-correlates that with the sound signal, meaning it kind of moves it across your sound signal and, and looks for a, a match um, uh, using a mathematical cross-correlation operator. Uh, so let's look at an example of that. Uh, because uh, it operates in the waveform, its kernel is also a wave file. Um, and so when you're, when you're specifying your, your kernel, you have to that wave file is going to be your kernel. Let's see. First, load the, the factory settings. Good uh, detection function down here. 
when I first did my batch filter, it looked like the, the, the detection function looked like a flat line. And that's just because I had the scaling set up so that um, all this was compressed into a single pixel on the display. Um, and that can happen with match filters. You, you think you don't have anything, but if you zoom in enough, you get something that looks like this. Um, this is a very good detection function because the noise level is very low compared to the height of the peaks up here. And so it makes it very easy to, to set a detection threshold. Here on the left axis is one milli unit, so I'm going to put my detection threshold at half of a milli unit. So it's 0 0.005, like that. And then I'm going to put my detection threshold at half of a milli unit. Will, will, will be there. So I'm trying to find something that's sort of clean all the way through the entire 
spectrum and uh, and pick one of those. Uh, question? Uh, so in general, for the most important points, you shift the even my sauna buoys are always close to a ship. Yeah. That filtering probably won't work as well as spectrogram correlation in the other ones, or? Right. Because um, if it's working on the waveform, I often can use it. Yeah, it might still work. Um, I mean, you'll have, you'll have noise in there, and so you won't get a okay, detection function that looks as clean as this one does, you know, with the noise way down here and the spikes way up there. But you'll probably, it's, it, 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 it depends far more on how scary type the calls are, okay. really. Um, uh, the noise matters some. I mean, I guess if you're having trouble seeing your calls with the background noise, then you won't get very good performance out of the kernel. But if, if the calls are standing out reasonably well, and you draw a nice tight box like that, you should get okay performance mm -hmm. out of it. You can filter out before you get the... Oh, yeah. You, yeah, you can also use the filter. It filters out, you know, of course, on a line or something. You have to have especially loud shift noise and low frequencies. So you can pre-filter the signal and then do the kernel? Yes. And then that will work better. It will only work on the signal, not the noise then? Right, yeah. I mean, if you can, so if you can design your filter so that it removes all the noise and leaves your call, then yes, you would you would get a better kernel. And you also do that on the on the data you're plugging in. That's great. And you can also do that on the data you're plugging in. And does normalization work for on this? No, thing? normalization applies to the spectrogram equalization. Um, and so it doesn't affect the match filter, you know, it won't affect your match filter kernel either. Uh, you have a question? Yeah, is, is there a way to take a kernel from
Are match filters faster than correlation than spectrum for? Um, not necessarily. It depends a lot on how big your spectrogram correlation kernel is, um, especially how much frequency it spans, um, and uh, how big your match filter kernel is also. So it can be faster, it can be slower. So a long, a long time series might be slower than a short. A long kernel yeah. is always going to take more time than a short okay. one, for, for either case, for either any kind yeah. of template matching. A bigger template takes more processing.
coming off the eight, like you went up that road, and oh, then yeah. you think that quick, like left, and it dips yeah. under, yeah. and that dip was full of water, and then there's a car like sitting in the length of bay, and just like try to drive through that, and then it's stuck. <laughs> or are they just trying to get rid of their cars? <laughs> That's a good question. Yeah.
your template is if your template is a series of clicks like that, um, that will work really well for a series is exactly like this. But the next wheel comes along, clicking even slightly slower so that the clicks lag behind, or have if the clicks have slightly different timing, the clicks in, in the target signal are not going to line up with the clicks in your kernel anymore. So a different wheel in that case is probably not going to have a good response out of the match folder. Um, so you're better off just taking a single click and drawing your box as carefully as possible around that single click. With click sounds, it's actually helpful to draw the box in the waveform. Um, just to make sure, let me turn on the waveform view here. Just kind of tricky. It's a, it's a biological sound. So, it's the 
summarize, uh, match filter uh, match filter detectors work well on really stereo type sounds. Uh, I tend to use them for odontic clicks and for baleen whales that have a, a really stereo type call. Uh, in this case, it's using an energy sun detector. 
Um, so here's the output of the energy sound detector. If you look carefully, you can see a sequence of peaks in here that, um, you know, this peak is higher than any of, the, any of the others. A lot of these peaks are just as high as, as other peaks. But there's a sequence in here of pretty regularly timed um, peaks in that, in that protection function, the energy sound detection function. And that's what it operates on. And the way it works, um, it starts with a equalized vector ram. Here's the energy sum. It takes a narrow window in that energy sum function. Um, let's blow that up. There's a, a sequence of peaks in there. It does something called an autocorrelation of that. Uh, and an autocorrelation will have peaks at time intervals where the um, where the where it sounds repeat. So here are these clicks, these detections are just over half a second apart. Here's half a second, and there's this big peak right there, just over half a second um, in the autocorrelation that corresponds to the repetition period of those of those energy sum peaks. So um, then it takes a window, I mean, uh, it takes bounds that you specify. Uh, I'm looking for sperm whale clicks, which tend to occur from about 0.3 or 0.4 seconds. 0.2 seconds, that's the repetition period of sperm oil clicks. The biggest male sperm oil seem to click with a, a cycle of about two seconds. Um, younger ones and females are more like one second typically. But I, I drew these bounds to um, include all of those types of sperm whales. So I'm looking for uh, repetition periods that are between 0.3 and 2 seconds. It takes the peak within that time and takes that peak and puts it on a new detection function that it's making. So that's a single point in my new detection function. Then it repeats the whole process and makes successive points at each time window. So it steps through the, your detection function like that and does that whole calculation and finds the peak in the autocorrelation at each time. And it ends up with something like that. And then do it for the entire time series. I end up with a, a detection function, a new detection function that's like this. Uh, and here are the oil clips here. And then I'm going to, you know, as usual, apply the threshold to this to say, okay, that's when that's when the clicks are present. Um, all right, that's all I want to say to that. So that's how the repeating call detector works. Um, detector for the, the first level connection here. Um, and for 
that, I want to have equalization turned on and floor and ceiling. So I turn on those three things. There's one second of our right. Now these pulse trains look like they last almost two seconds long, so I want to use a time constant that's longer than that. Um, so let's say five seconds. I need five seconds. Five. Yeah. Okay. So here you can see two of the multiple strings. Windows to do that autocorrelation process to find repeating things. 
Um, and point one is good. I mean, that it, it does every window it, it overlaps ten kind of them. Um, uh, to uh, when, when stepping through this. Uh, So that second number should be significantly smaller than the window length, usually? Uh, it's it's uh, got to be less than one. The oh, max repetition no. period you're talking about? The window hop size. Oh, yes, it should be less than one. Um, and I would say less than a half. Um, yeah, less than 0 0.5. Or, well, 0 0.5 or less. But it's relative good. to your window length, I guess, is it related to that at all? Yeah, it's relative to your window length. Um, so you can actually just leave it at 0 0.1. Always, I mean, I, I rarely change that number. Um, smaller numbers, you know, smaller hop size means it's doing the calculation more often. Um, so it can slow things down a little bit to have to do that. Uh, but it, it's usually not, the speed is usually not an issue with this detector. So um, 0 0.1 is a good number to have in there for, for pretty much any animal. Okay, run it. My detection function goes off the top of here. Um, and so uh, this often happens when turning on the repetitive sequence detector. A lot of rescaling of the detection function is going to be needed. Zero, 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 down, zero. 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 If, you, uh, if it's entering into the log, once you set that detection, is it just doing one set of clicks per log entry? Like, would you only get two log entries here? I would get two log entries here, okay. yeah. Um, so one for this detection and one for this one. Um, uh, it makes one log entry, you know, every time the detection function goes up above the threshold and it comes back down, that counts as one detection. And, you know, I would also, if I were, um, when I, when I want to use this, I would go into my detection options and make sure that it's set so that, you know, a detection that lasts for more than two seconds is, is valid. You know, the minute max duration of the detection, I want to make sure that it's going to be more than two or even three seconds um, uh, to make sure that, that those things are getting detected properly. And we could set up an accept, reject kind of thing that didn't work yesterday, but that does work yeah. in general. How well does would this work on something like comeback song with spray or not? Yeah, that has, let's say for a phrase, it's got yeah, complexity in it. Um, like frequency complexity. It would probably work reasonably well just because comeback units tend to repeat pretty evenly within a phrase. Um, you know, it's kind of about every three seconds or something, three, three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, you get a unit. And so if you set up an energy sound detector or a tonal sound detector that we're going to do in a few minutes um, as your first line of detector and then apply the sequence detectors to it, it would probably work pretty well. 
But it would I'm be like detecting units machines. or phrases. It would be a lot of the phrases. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's that's one thing about the uh, this repetitive sound detector. It detects repeating things. It's not no longer detecting individual calls or individual pulses or whatever. It's detecting the whole sequence. So we have three whiteboards basically. Okay, why don't you try it? Um, there's a um, file in the there's a set of all small things called Pinky Dash 93. It's an Atlantic Pinky Way off. Um, so, so I can walk through it a little bit. There's not really much more to it. Up here is because there's a low cost filter on this recording. Um, 
the equalization process happens after filtering. So um, if I had a filter on, you know, it would still be a low pass filter that kept the sound down here and made it quiet up here. Uh, equalization would still be amplifying the, the, the sound that's almost, you know, almost completely quiet up here. It would say, oh, it's so quiet, I'm going to have to boost the amplification to come out. I can make it go away just by putting it off the top of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> frequency range, I can specify numeric frequency ranges, so I'm going to go up to 180, 190 hertz. Yeah, now you can't see it. That's also probably a good maximum frequency for my energy detector, 190 hertz. The lowest frequencies I'm seeing are maybe 40 hertz, 50 hertz, somewhere around there. It's the lower end of some of these things. 60 hertz ish. Right here, uh, also 60 hertz. It's hard to see. There's a call sequence right there. So that's a good lower bound for the energy sound. Offset in units. Right. Your units uh, are yeah. way different. It's, it's somewhere off the bottom of the top of the. the, the I think. Oh, yep, there it is. It's on the top.
looking at a couple of faint pulse trains. Just because I wanted to 
accommodate animals that didn't happen to be in this, in this particular file I'm looking at. I used a window length of 30 seconds. Uh, that's kind of how long the, the sequences are. If the, the sequences are longer than that, it's not a problem. Um, like, you know, sometimes Minty Whales will make pulse trains that are a minute long. Um, in that case, I just have, you know, high detection function for a long time. If that window slides along uh, the energy cell function. And I stuck with 0.1 for the hot size. Yeah. 